Real Life Theater presents Far Reaches, written and directed by Ellen Morburn. Act Two. Again? Oh. Hi. I feel... I think... I believe I should apologize for my last leaving. I believe that my behavior was out of line. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, remember... I was rude to you about avoiding... No, I do remember. I mean, I don't think you were out of line. It's fine. It's fine? Are you quite sure? Definitely. I would hate to jeopardize our... This. What we have. I find that I value our relationship. Friendship. Oh! You said we were friends. So, what we have is a friendship. Oh. I... I find that I value it too. I... I... I am overcome. These are such intense feelings. I am unaccustomed. Thank you. May I ask how old you are? Oh, yes, of course. But I think you are less asking how much time I have been personally alive and more what my relative maturity and development level are for my species. Sure. I am recently post-larval. What does that mean? I am the equivalent of a person who is newly entering adulthood, where adulthood includes three metamorphic phases, each of which lasts about as long as your species' single lifespan. Ah. And how old are you? Don't you already know? From all your scanning... Oh, but this is not the same thing at all. I am most interested in your own assessment of your age. What developmental stage do you believe yourself to be in? You are upset again. I am most sorry. I will not pursue this line of... it's all right. I just... I don't know how to answer... I don't know myself very well. I mean, I know myself intimately. All of my parts and how each piece of me feels and my skill in finding the roaches and my skill in riding the water and my craft and how it tastes to lick the dew off cracked lips in the early morning. And I remember lots and lots of stories. But since you've come here, I've realized that I don't know which stories are mine. My own memories, or if any of them are. Oh. Yes. Oh. You see why I was so worried about you including me in your report? Not particularly. Because I'm wrong. I'll get it wrong. I don't know what's real, at least not about my past, not about my people. I'm sorry. But this is wonderful. What? Why? This is a brilliant experience for my report. In my species, all information is shared. Everyone's stories, collated, categorized, cross-referenced, reimagined, re-cataloged, constantly shared. We do not hold stories primarily in our own minds but rather through endless shared and archived reports, which we can all access freely. I have no reference in my own life for a sentient being losing part of itself in the way you describe. Although I did read about a fascinating species whose individuals forget everything they've experienced at each sunset and operate from a purely... My apologies, I digress. I am so honored to witness 
your authentic reality. There is no need for you to cater to me at all. I have no agenda, after all, beyond witnessing and recording faithfully. Oh, are you all right? I feel this is more complicated than my life usually is. I float, I paddle, I find and harvest the roaches. I avoid the others. So I feel relief, gratitude for your acceptance and your interest. But also it is not wonderful. It is not brilliant to lose your own stories. Mm. No, I see that it must not be. I'm truly sorry. That's all right. I feel better just for having told you this about me. Just for having a, a friend. I am here. <clears throat> First witness for the third planet, 16th system, far reaches. Fourth report. Feelings first. In my fourth 72 hours on this planet, I have felt excited, determined, Fiercely loyal, hopeful, focused. Found data. I am pausing in my scans of the planet while I focus on helping my friend. I register this as a formal witness intervention in the lineage of Koopa. I will file form 31B-2A upon completion of this intervention. Significant isolated experience. I made a friend. I knew this was a possibility. I know that as witnesses, we cannot help but affect the lives of those we witness and that our species believes in embracing this truth rather than pretending it can be prevented. I know that relationships are always a possible outcome of witnessing a sentient species but I never dreamed what it would feel like. And on my very first mission, I feel humbled and awed by the enormity of this moment. I should have included those last two feelings in the first part of my report. I will work harder to assess my inner state more accurately. I am determined to improve the quality of my reporting. I am determined to help my friend. Pause report. <sighs> Tell me about the others. What do you want to know? Why don't you want to interact with them? I... And is it all of them or a specific club? I... And how long has this been the case? Do you remember when... Friend, please. My apologies. I'm so deeply excited to be helping you and to be worthy of this name you now call me, friend. I am ready to put all of my skills and resources to work on your behalf. Yes, but... And thank you, but I may need to go slowly. Of course. Of course. Where would you like to begin? It's not exactly that I don't want to interact with the others. 
I feel great anger when I think of them. I feel afraid. I know many stories that might be why I feel that way, but I do not know if they are true stories or even if they are mine. I cannot risk facing them. What if the story of being cast out is true? What if they are a danger to me? And much of the time, I don't want to face them. Because I think that I left. Because I think I could not forgive them. In the stories that you hold, are the other people the same? As in, across your different memories, or possibly memories, are there any people who appear more than once? And if so, how frequently? I... I have never thought of that. There is a child. No. What? What child? That showed a promising emotional response. No. But if you want me to uncover the truth... I think I want to see what we can find out about my stories. I think. Maybe that I want to remember myself. I do not want to be uncovered. The child is too painful. And too confusing. But yes, the child is in a few of my stories. There are a few other people, but I cannot see their faces clearly. I think there are a few specific ones who appear in more than one of these... What did you call them? Possibly memories? I understand. I must be more patient. My apologies, this is a hallmark of my age, but it does not excuse my behavior. I appreciate your desire to help me. Very much. So, no mention of the child at this time. Thank you. But these other people? It sounds like you are remembering a specific clutch. Your home clutch, perhaps? Your clutch of origin? Your birth clutch? Tell me, is it typical for people to migrate between clutches or no? You haven't answered that yet through your own witnessing? Well, I have my guesses and inferences, but I have only had 12 days and nights to observe so far. It is not typical, but it does happen. Clutches are all different sizes, and the water has many patterns of movement that you can trace. Every few cycles, my clutch would meet up with several other clutches, and we would have a moon-long gathering. Celebrations, sharing stories, massive roach harvests as they followed us to our gathering and feasted in rich, waste-filled waters around us. I always thought that was strange, actually that the roaches would swarm around us in their thousands, maybe millions, even though that meant that we would harvest most of them. Why didn't they learn to stay away from these huge gatherings of our people? I doubt that they are capable of assessing the patterns to which you are referring. They are not sentient in the way of your people and mine. Still. Stupid. Anyway, some people always ended up moving between clutches at these gatherings, saying goodbye to their clutch of origin, as you called it, and joining a new clutch. Do you remember if you ever changed clutches in this way? I... I don't know. I didn't think so. But now... My thoughts are confused. I see different stories and they all seem likely, and I cannot tell which ones are mine or true. Or anything. You are agitated. We should pause for today. What is happening to me? How can I not remember who I am? What my life has been? I know all about my culture and the water and how to survive. and But I cannot remember whose bones these are. I know they were someone. Several someones. Our rafts are made out of our ancestors, our family, our people. And I know that I am supposed to know the stories of the people of my raft, but I... 
I cannot tell if these confused stories in my mind belong to them, or to me, or to no one. You are agitated. Please, friend, let's pause. Remember, the super report continues. Each moment of inquiry will be preserved and strung together. We have time. I don't have time. I mean, I don't know if I do. I feel, and you have much more than me. Your lifespan is more than triple mine. Well, yes, but I will preserve our relationship in record. It will be shared by all of my people. Perhaps we won't have time to make complete sense of everything, but sense will be made. Your truth will be known. I'm not hive-minded like you are. I don't care about others' understanding. I want my own. Yes. Let's pause for today, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is the most gripping experience I've ever had. I'm glad for you. Until tomorrow? Sure. Goodbye for now. Again, arm. First witness for the third planet, 16th system far reaches. Special report. This witness intervention is taking up my whole mind in ways I could never have imagined. I am not resting very much. I find myself pouring through archived reports about various species memory patterns and the history of multiple worlds. I have begun drawing out possible scenarios that might explain my friend's memory experience. So far, there are too many plausible possibilities. I must find a way to narrow these options. I am returning to the nearest clutch to begin a systematic interview process focused entirely on memory. I will interview every clutch on the planet if I must. I will find out what is happening to my friend. I will return to my traditional planet-wide witnessing scans after the successful completion of this intervention. I find that I will not let go of this. Pause report. In the story, the clutch gets pulled unexpectedly off course in the night. We awaken in the day to the night paddlers struggling to redirect us. The day paddlers jump to help. There is a mist blocking the horizon, a rare occurrence. Sunlight breaks through the fog and we see the land. Fear, freezing fear. We never approach the land. We never explore it. There are only a few pieces of land in all the water. They are all tall and stabbing at the sky. They are sharp and barren and bizarre. We do not understand the land's hardness, its stillness. This land in front of us is too close. The water is too frantic. It is a spire of rock, that strangest of substances whipped over long cycles by the wind into a skinny tower. 
From the churning of the water, it is clear that there is more land just below the surface. This is the most danger our clutch has ever been in. This is worse than a flock of stormfish. One of the paddlers is pulling and pulling with full might, trying to steer the biggest raft away from the tearing rocks. A single tear could be enough to drown the raft. Suddenly, the paddler flips the paddle down into the water and pushes. Pushes. The raft is lifted by this single paddle over the reaching, clawing rock that nearly destroyed it. I cannot remember if I was the paddler, or if I was a terrified child, or if I was even there. I remember the feeling of rock, the first I'd ever touched, so much harder and sharper than bone, and yet so smooth on its flat side, like nothing I'd ever felt. Did I reach out and stroke a rock under the water as we scraped past? Did I push us off one? Is this my story at all? Ah! Uh. <clears throat> First witness for the third planet, 16th system, far reaches. Special report. I have successfully interviewed every member of the nearest clutch. In this line of focused questioning, I have begun to string together a new possibility. I find it a bit unsettling. I detect two other clutches within a two-day paddle radius. I will interview them tomorrow. I will keep myself open to possibility. I think I will need to restart my deep tissue planet scans. They may confirm or disprove my evolving hypothesis. I'm setting them into a new auto pattern for this night. We will see what emerges. Pause report. I have spoken to the nearest clutch. Is it all right if I talk to you about it? Okay. I think it is the clutch of your origin. It makes the most sense in the patterns that they traditionally travel in relationship to your own routine movements. And there is a genetic relationship between you and them. And they remember a member of their clutch Well, they say one of their own must have gone insane because they remember someone leaving, and they say no one does that. No one lives alone. Okay. Okay. I have also interviewed two additional clutches a little farther away, whose patterns would take them into these waters much less frequently and who seem less likely to be related to you. Okay. But they are related to you. What does that mean? I do not yet know. I'm working on it. In some ways, it makes sense for all of your people to be at least somewhat related, as all members of a species technically are. But usually there are huge genetic variations, striations in the DNA caused by distance of time and migratory movements and the interplay of reproduction. Sure. Among your people, there are minimal genetic variations. The kind that one might see in, say, a pair of identical twins who have lived extraordinarily different lives. Which is particularly astonishing because you all seem to reproduce perfectly healthily with robust offspring. 
You do have a shockingly short gestation period for such a complex species. What are identical twins? Oh, two people originating from a single cell. What does that mean? Does the word ovum mean anything to you? It does not. Oh, of course. Well, do I actually need to understand this identical twin thing? It should suffice, if you trust me, when I say that your people, all of your people, are too similar. The way you said that. What is wrong? Nothing is necessarily wrong. But you're worried that something is. Well, yes. I'm concerned. But even if my strange hypothesis proves true, it is not an inherently bad thing, just different. Would you care to elaborate? I honestly would rather not at this moment. I would prefer to have a more comprehensive story to report to you. And I have a few more questions for you to help me fill in that narrative. Is that all right? Yes. I can be patient. I said I wanted to move slowly, so I'll wait till you're ready to share it all. Thank you. So, do you remember a bone spear carved with small spirals? It's one of the larger kind of your people's spears made from a femur. I mean, I know about those kind of spears, but I don't really remember. Wait. My hand remembers. I remember holding it on long watches and tracing the lines of the spirals with my thumb. Or sliding my thumb over the pattern. Is that real? Is that one of my memories? Possibly. Thank you very much. I must return to my primary craft now. I will find you again as soon as I can. Please feel free to move about the water as you normally would. You won't be back tomorrow? I think I need more time to interview more people. In clutches much, much farther away. All right. No worries. No worries at all. Bye. Bye. In the story, there are two people. They move on a large raft, an uncommon craft among our people, but for the moon gathering, with so many clutches all together for so long, we like to have a big, flat space to share. There was a long storytelling that night. Most people have gone to sleep. These two move together. They dance. (laughs) Dancing is a rare act reserved for when we have these gatherings and have joined up the rafts (laughs) to create more space to move. Two people dancing together on their own. Mm. This is a special moment. The dance changes. Fingertips begin to trace edges lips begin to seek hidden places. As the two people continue to dance, they begin to taste each other and caress each other. This is a sacred moment. To be able to stand and move together freely and also to touch each other with such care. This is a luxury afforded by the moon gathering. I hate not knowing if I was there. If I was one of the two dancers. Or a silent, reverent witness to their tenderness. I hate not knowing if this story is mine or not. I hate it. End of Act 2
Our story will continue when we return for the conclusion of Far Reaches. You have been listening to Far Reaches, presented by Real Live Theater. Written and directed by Ellen Morburn. Production managed by Syl Simmons. Performed by Linda Tardiff as the raft person and Trenda Lofton as the witness. Sound design, recording, and editing by Rachel Hall. Theme song composed by Cynthia Zates, PhD. Your support keeps us going. You can donate securely at any time on our website at www.reallivetheater.net slash donate. Thank you. This program is supported in part by grants from the Amherst, Burlington, Greenfield, Hadley, Holyoke, South Hadley, and Springfield Cultural Councils, local agencies which are supported by the Mass Cultural Council, a state agency.